you know, people ask me this all the time, Alex, what do you think is going to happen with Model 3 in the next few months? So basically for the rest of the summer. Um, and, you know, obviously I don't have a crystal ball, but I think at this point I have a pretty good idea. So I, I, I can make a pretty educated guess and I'm going to share it with you guys coming up next. Take it over the world. Welcome to the show. If you're watching me on YouTube, please consider subscribing, of course, so you don't miss anything moving forward. Normally, uh, this would also be broadcasted live originally on Patreon. Today is not one of those days, though. Thank you so much for supporting me. If you want to support the show on Patreon, please go to patreon.com slash 4 e uh, for electric. Um, and uh, today uh, I am in Great Britain. So this was a pre-recorded a couple of days ago. I am doing a story on BMW and I'm going to bring it to you guys in the next week or so. So look forward to that. Uh, tomorrow I have uh, Steve Burns, which is also a pre-recorded interview, but I guarantee you this one is pretty good one. Uh, he's a CEO workhorse. Uh, as you know, they just came up with a W15 uh, plug-in hybrid truck. Um, and they have uh, also delivery trucks that are all electric that uh, they are now now launching um, in this area, in San Francisco area. There are a couple of pilot companies doing that. So that's pretty cool. The week after that, I'm going to have the CEO of Automobili Paninfarina, Michael Pershki, who is going to tell us about the very first Paninfarina uh, car that they are working on right now. And the week after that, I'm going to have Chad Balch, who is with communications uh, for Chevrolet. And we're going to have some interesting conversation about Chevy Bolt and other electric projects uh, uh, at Chevy. Some good, some bad, some ugly. I think it's going to be pretty honest conversation. I can definitely promise you that. All right. Well, so let's talk about Model 3. And um, just like I said, there is no crystal ball. But I think at this point, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm making this video in the middle of May. Um, I think uh, really, you know, just judging by the rate at which uh, Tesla has been ramping up the production. And it looks like, you know, there are quite a few trackers there. Bloomberg Tracker is one of them. It looks like um, they are kind of going according to the plan as far as the s curve is concerned. So I think at this point, after all this time, it's been almost a year since they started to, pro you know, producing the car. Uh, it's, 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 I think it's reasonable to say they will continue hitting that S curve and they will end up making 5,000 Model 3s by the end of uh, uh, this quarter, which means by the end of uh, June. Now, if they don't somehow get there, I think it will be pretty close, but, but you know, like 4,800 maybe. But by then, obviously, everybody will be, uh, uh, you know, uh, aware that, hey, listen, if they're only two or three hundred uh, away, they will definitely get it done in the next two weeks uh, because they've been kind of on the schedule, on this ramp up uh, steadily for a long time. So I think that would be just fine. And, you know, and I really think Elon will do everything possible to meet this goal. Now, I know he hasn't really met it his own deadline really that many times, but I really think he doesn't have much of a choice because uh, this is really, really important. Um, everyone's watching, he missed it too many times. He's also promising to be profitable in the next quarter and for that he needs to uh, meet that uh, deadline uh, and that goal of 5,000 Model 3 cars made every week. So I believe he will, at the very least, at least be very close, so maybe late by one or two weeks, but that really on the grand scheme of things won't matter. Now, I hope that the earnings call will go a little different this time around. Now, that's my hope. I really think there's only one of the two ways how how, how can you go about it. One, he can continue being very standoffish and maybe just not allow uh, some of those um, uh, analysts to just ask questions at all, and he'll continue asking questions from maybe more friendly media, including uh, uh, Galileo. And I'm actually pretty sure he's gonna get to ask at least one question because obviously uh, uh, Elon really liked them. Um, now you know my opinion about that. I think he should ask, you know, answer questions, not the ones that he likes, but the ones that investors want to know. Uh, but some people can argue that hey, Galileo is one that represents uh, um, some of them. So whatever, I think that's gonna happen. But, if he's going to continue being standoffish, I really hope uh, he has at least a, a more polite and, and classy way of going about it. Um, but I really do think he's actually going to kind of back up a little bit and, and be a little bit more respectful. As a matter of fact, I, I believe and I really hope really, but I wouldn't be surprised if the first two questions are going to come from those analysts that he kind of hung up on in the earnings call uh, for Q1. I think he's just going to back up and just kind of 
maybe if not apologize, but at least uh, let them ask their questions this, this time around, because he did mention that he believed, uh, believed it was foolish of him not to do so. So I kind of have that expectation, and I think that would kind of uh, maybe reset a little bit uh, uh, his relationship with media, with analysts, and so forth. So I think a lot of good is going to come out uh, from that. I think a lot of people will be watching, and I hope he uh, pleasantly surprises them. Um, I, I, I can imagine the Model S and Model X production not being on track and you know it looks like they're not going to be increasing um, the output so it looks like they're just going to be the same which is which is just fine now another good news that i, I think at that point he can remind uh, people of is that hey people have been buying this car at its almost top price for a while now and and they're going to continue going now of course he promised us once uh once he meets that goal of 5000 cars per week uh, they're going to start producing performance and all wheel drive version which a lot of people are waiting for so if anything the price is going to go up but i and but I really think because he also said that that's when they're going to start producing the standard uh, battery pack. And I think by the end of summer, I would really expect them to start producing their very first $35,000 uh, Model 3s as expected. Because I think even if they limit that production to just, you know, small number, because they still obviously want to make as much money as possible on the long range and performance and, and a uh, all-wheel drive um, just so they can say hey guys we are finally selling these cars that we told you about many years ago and and here they are right it doesn't have there doesn't have to be too many of them but i think that's where um that's where uh, uh they're going to start making it uh by the way before i make the next point of course before i forget this video and this channel is sponsored by evanex the aftermarket accessories that do include a lot of stuff for the model 3 so check it out the discount code is in the description of this video so uh, go ahead uh, grab that and you're going to be able to save yourself a few bucks um all right so um with what i just said um and again i i think all of this is relatively educated yes because of what's been happening because of the ramp up production numbers and so forth and i think elon is going to roll roll back a little bit as far as kind of a heated uh, standoffish relationship with investors. And I think this is where the revolution can really start, right? I've always said this, this Model 3 is going to be the revolution of electric cars. And when the first customer gets the $35,000 uh, version delivered, uh, that's when we are actually going to uh, say, I, I th this is it. This is where it's starting. I believe by then uh, those people who will be receiving those cars, and I'm hoping to be one of them actually, uh, we will be able to get the full uh, tax rebate and the $2,500 California rebate. So really those cars will fall in our hands at $25,000. And I think that would be absolutely unbelievable because I think this car is the best uh, uh, bang for your buck. Even when you buy a long version, whatever you can buy, uh, the long range version, what you can buy right now, it's still absolutely amazing. Um, I think a lot of people from uh, drivers of BMW 3 Series and Mercedes C-Class and uh, A3 and A4s uh, are, are all going to be switching uh, to this car and the more of them we'll see on the road the more you know people will see them and be able to drive along with their friends and family the more people will get themselves on the, the reservation list and and it's just going to be no stopping uh, uh to it i believe this will be the best selling car in its class period very very soon as soon as they're able to reach the twenty thousand. Uh, cars per month output, which is kind of insane. So um, that's my prediction. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Obviously, um, uh, anyone's guess is, uh, you know, within reason uh, should be considered. Let me know what you think. Of course, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, don't forget the interview tomorrow and on Sunday. I have another uh, interesting video that you might want to check out. I will uh, feature me being interviewed on a podcast. So uh, enjoy that. Other than that, I will see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.